This is the making of Shoreline Mafia, the OGZ episode. Living in East Hollywood, Ojizi grew up fast. To put food on the table, his mother worked long hours, which gave a young Ojizi a lot of free time to run the streets. But it was his uncle who put him onto the type of music which would eventually spark his interest in rapping. I was born in Hawthorne, so I stayed in Hawthorne until maybe around five, I think that's when my mom uh, wasn't with my pops no more, so uh, we moved to... Hollywood with my grandma, East Hollywood, and it was like 10, 11 of us in a, in like a two-bedroom, I think. Uh, yeah, and I pretty much grew up in East Hollywood my whole life. It's like a Hispanic-Armenian community. My dad, I, I ain't really uh, ever grew up with my dad too much. You know, I've seen him. I've seen him, but it never was like a like a real relationship for me. And then my mom was with my uh, step-pops. Uh... So I was growing up with him, but I ain't fuck with bro. And my mom would try to work like as much as she could to provide for us. You feel me? So she'd be working like all day, all night. You feel me? So I just and my grandma was home, so I just be doing whatever the fuck I wanted, sneaking out and shit, doing whatever I wanted. I remember sneaking out when I was like eight, eight years old. You feel me? Just going out tagging, doing whatever I wanted, just kicking it with older, older cats. And then when I started getting closer to. Uh, to like middle school, my my uncle started putting me on everything else. You feel me? Like three six, uh, Boosie, like everything, everything. You feel me? So I listen to whatever. Um, most definitely, I remember bumping three six like a lot, a lot. Like being a little kid playing Grand Theft Auto and just listening to, like three six in the back. So yeah, that definitely impacted me. I feel like uh, the whole content, everything they would talk about. That's what I'd be talking about too. You feel me? The first time I heard I ever heard of fucking Lean was the was a, the Sippin' on Syrup song, you feel me? I remember being a little kid, like, oh, I want to try that shit. Why did you think you want to try it? It sounded cool in the song. <laughs> Ojeezy was always creative. At an early age, he thought he would grow up to be a gangbanger, but he funneled that energy into skateboarding and graffiti. But as it turns out, sometimes a little graffiti can lead to some unwanted predicaments. Like seeing my 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 step, both of my my pops and my step pops gangbang. You feel me? So growing up, that's a, that's what I seen. I was like, damn, I want to be a gangbanger. But then getting into like middle school, high school, I was like, I don't need to do that shit. You feel me? And I I, I got into other things. I got into like skateboarding and shit. So I I be with so many different type of people that I just that that's how I figured like. Like, that's why I feel like I appeal to so many different type of people, you feel me? Because I've been around so many different type of people. I'm not, I don't act a certain way, you feel me? Like, I go kick it with white kids. I go kick it with the gangbangers. I go kick it with the taggers. I go kick it with, with whoever, you feel me? Like, so so I got into, like, skateboarding and shit. And, and I just feel like it made me a, di- a different person. But I remember I was tagging in elementary school for sure. I didn't really try to get too artistic with it. Like, I got boys that's really crazy with it, you feel me? But that wasn't me. I just, like, fucking shit up. It's a beauty in, like, putting my name, like, how I write it on on some shit. You feel me? Like, that shit beautiful to me. Did your mom know? Yeah, hell yeah. Well, I got caught taking so many times. I'm lucky for some reason that they would always just let me go to my mom. You feel me? Like, a bunch of my homies, they, uh, they would all get, like, a case and they get put on probation. Then they get locked up for smoking, like, all types of shit. You feel me? I got... Lucky that I never had to, I, a lot of times I didn't have to go see the judge. Like, they just let me go. Like, fuck it, we gonna let you go to your mom's. And that didn't happen with, like, 90% of everyone I knew. You feel me? They'll get one little case, then they'll, they'll get caught smoking, then they'll be gone for, like, nine months. You feel me? Uh, I just remember one time I got away, like, clean. Like, I, like I got caught red-handed. Like, I was writing on the wall. I turned around, the cops just looking at me in the eyes. He put the light on me, and I just started taking off. I think, like, he caught, he, he stopped someone that was next to me. That was the, uh, he thought that person was with me. So he's like, oh, I got him. So I'm taking off. He gets that person, that person not with me. So I'm just, I'm just, like, running through the neighborhood. They're looking for me. The helicopter out, all types of shit. And I'm just laying in bushes for, like, two hours. And they're still going around the whole neighborhood. And I'm just like, bro, I, st- I got to make it out of here. I can't wait in these bushes. So I just start making my way, like, 
as far as I can from the scene, I got away. One of OG's biggest traits is his ability to move in various circles, but still be himself. When he started high school, he saw how moving in different circles could be a beneficial business move. Yeah, you feel me? Uh, like I said before, like I fuck with everybody, you feel me? So I, I be fuck, I kick it with the skaters, I kick it with the taggers, I kick it with the gang man, you feel me? I just fuck with everybody, you know. Uh, and and then in high school, that's in a me and my boy, we 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 got our, our, our first pound, you feel me? We started breaking it down and just flipping that. Then I was like, all right, I'm I'm into getting money, you feel me? I want to get some money. But then I got into stealing shit, and I steal so much shit, like. Thousand dollars worth of shit every day, so I was like, I don't even need money. Whatever I want, I'm just gonna take it. There was one time uh, we got a magnet to take the alarms off. That shit only lasted a week because we went too crazy and I got caught. And what happened? Uh, they gave me a, a burglary. I had to do fucking uh, Caltrans. That's how much shit we took. I think it was like over a thousand in, in one store. So we had to do like uh, I got a commercial burglary, and then I had to do a. Uh, they offered us jail time or couch hands. I was like, I'd rather do the couch hands. I don't want to go to fucking jail. I'd rather be out. So I did a couch hands. And then my other homie, he had, like, the nigga I got the case with, uh, he had, like, uh, Grand Theft Auto, all types of shit. So he didn't even get a choice. They're like, nah, you're going, st- you're going straight to jail. I should have went with that nigga because he only did 10 days because the county's so packed. They only gave him 10 days. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I had to do couch hands for, like, two, three months. That's, like, the worst type of fucking... Um, the worst type of community service in the fucking world. That shit like a nine to five. And it's like real hard work. Like super hard work. Picking weeds out on the freeway. All types of shit. Like dumb shit that don't even seem necessary. This was when I was like 19, 20 actually. When I caught that. When I was when I first turned 18, I dodged like a big case. I got the, uh, uh, I caught a, a Grand Theft Auto and a, a saw with deadly weapon the same night. So they was trying to give us some years, you feel me? But we beat that case. and uh, But that night, you feel me? That was just one night, like a random night. You feel me? Caught that case, and niggas was facing, like, five years. You feel me? So that could have changed my whole life. Around this time, Ojeezy connects with Phoenix, and they decide to work together. They don't have a studio, but that doesn't stop them from recording. They put a song out, and it gets some plays. But to Ojeezy and Phoenix, it's just another regular day. Like I said, I made a song or two. Everyone I knew was feeling it. They was fucking with it. So um, uh, I just kept making songs on the side every now and then, you feel me? And it eventually just kept progressing, you feel me? People, more people was fucking with it. And I just kept doing it. I ain't ever say I want to be a rapper. I don't think I ever did that. And I felt like my shit was always cool. I feel like off off bat, that shit wasn't bad. So I could see why people fuck with it. What kind of music were you making at that time? Same type of music, you feel me? Just all types. I feel like uh, the shit that makes music different is beats. You feel me? So I was always trying to go for different beats. So I'd be fucking with all types of shit. Um, I remember my first song with Phoenix. How we started Shoreline. Like um, I had already came out with like three, four songs. Put them on SoundCloud. I recorded them with no mic. Like just straight talking on my computer. And then one day he was like. Yeah, he had been telling me he wanted to rap and shit. Showed me some shit. I'm like, damn, he hard as fuck. We leaked up, made one, one one song, and I was like, dude, we saw we saw good together. Like, yo, we could we could do this shit and we just kept doing it. Uh we was already boys, you feel me? That's why he just he told me randomly that he rapped too and I was like, Oh what? And he's like, Yeah, I'm trying to record some shit So I was like, For sure, come through and that was the day we did that shit. We made our first song. Nothing nothing different from any other day, you feel me? Did a song, then we went out, continued our day. Maybe we started getting a few thousand plays and shit. Then we was like, oh, yeah, we could do this. So then we start coming up, trying to come up with a name and shit. Then we came up with the name. I'm the waviest person. I know you, feel me? So I ain't know no one else. And niggas don't even be using that term over here on the West Coast. That's like some East Coast shit, you feel me? But I grew up look, watching Max B, look, seeing Dipset, all that shit, you feel me? So I'm into everything. So I definitely feel like my swag was different from anyone else's that I know. So I was like, yeah, we got to come up with something different because that's, that's how I hooked up with Phoenix. You feel me? Me and him was different than anyone else. So we came up with uh, Shoreline Mafia because the wave started at the Shoreline. So that's how, that's how the name came about. As the four members of the group are moving around L.A., 
they start to link up. Ojeezy gets an apartment, and it becomes the unofficial studio for Shoreline. But music is still a hobby, and Ojeezy is focused on making money. Phoenix came across. Phoenix moved to uh, Midtown. I swear, him and him and Rob linked up, and they just they became like they was just rapping all the time. You feel me? They be just became partners. You feel me? They was just rapping all the time. This was a time when. And we was all like kind of doing our own shit. Like she was going, we was growing up. Phoenix had just had a baby, so that's why he moved to Miss City with his baby mama. So him and Rob got together, and then I'm I'm just living life. You feel me? Just doing what I do. And then I meet um, I met Kato at a at a festival with a with my homie. My homie that's locked up right now, free my nigga show dog. He introduced me to Kato, and me and Kato just been cool ever since. We've been rocking with each other ever since. I mean, Kato used to just link up all the time, get high, turn up, all that. It's like 2012 to like 2000. Nah, 2013 to 16, maybe. No, no. Some shit around. Like a three-year period, I got my own spot. Like, I got a low-income spot at a nice-ass place. Like, like on Hollywood Boulevard, they gave me a, they gave me a, what's that shit called? Affordable housing. They gave me a spot at a brand new place on Hollywood Boulevard, so we would just turn shit up. That's where we made everything musty, bottle service, all the hits. We made that shit there. You feel me? That was just like the house. That was a spot. I I I realized I couldn't just be stealing this shit how I used to. So I was like, damn, I gotta obviously find a way to make money. I wasn't trying to work like that. So I eventually started like getting good at, at selling drugs. You feel me? Like really good. This shit. And then I'm just making money every day. If I wasn't rapping, I'd be going up. Like I, I feel like sometimes I'd be, I'd be doing a show or something. I'd be like, damn, nigga, I was making this money already. That's like none of this shit new to me. None of this shit surprised me. Like you feel me? Everything. I just keep going up. And so at this time, that's like, like, like if I, if I ain't do all that, like if I, ain't, if I ain't make all the money I made and shit, then I wouldn't be the person I am. I wouldn't make the music I make. You feel me? But I did, I made that bread, I know how to do shit, I know how to, you feel me, I feel like I was I was really growing up, I was turning into a man, I feel like that that's, that's what started turning me into a businessman, that was like the biggest thing, you feel me, I got out of it, I remember getting high, just turning up, you feel me, like regular shit, and just messing out on so much money, you feel me, like damn, I can't do this, That's that's pretty much how I... I got to a point where I'm like, I don't even want to get high no more because you just miss out on money. It was just another recording session in Ojeezy's crib. But little did they know, what they recorded that day would eventually gain them some plaques and a label deal. We recorded Musty and it was just a regular day. Phoenix came through and he was like, yo, we got to work. And I was like, nigga, I don't, don't want to rap. <laughs> you feel me? I wasn't even trying to rap. But I was like, all right, this nigga want to work, so I guess we got to do it. Like, I was like, so I turned my phone off. I turned my phone. I remember doing that. I turned my phone off so I wouldn't get distracted. I wouldn't get no calls. I wouldn't have to go hustle. You feel me? So that's what I do on my studio sessions. When we was doing Shoreline, do that shit. I just turn my phone off. Otherwise, I'm finna want to go make some money. I'm not going to want to sit around and fucking rap for free. So I turned my phone off that day. And then he was like, yeah, I want to do some, some West Coast ratchet type shit. And then I had been bumping a lot of Draco all that shit, and, and everybody had beats from Run Run, so I'm like, damn, this nigga Run Run cold, I thought Run Run was famous, though, you feel me, because I don't know nothing about music, so I'm just, I'm just listening, so if I listen to all these songs, and Run Run make the beat, he must be famous, you feel me, because it's a bunch of different artists, and then, uh, so I go look for a Run Run beat, I find this nigga SoundCloud page, he got like an instrumental tape, I found two beats, I listen to uh, Bottle Service first, the Bottle Service beat, and I write Musty to that beat. And I'm like, oh, shit, hard. I'm about to do this. Then I play the Musty beat, and I'm like, oh, no, I'm doing it to this beat. And then so I came up with the hook. This nigga Phoenix came over. I'm like, look, I got this. I did the hook, my verse. He's like, oh, yeah, it's hard. I'm finna get on it. He gets on it, finish that, and, like, I'm like, all right, now let's do this beat. Play this beat. And then he write, he's writing his shit, he whispering his shit out. And that's when I came up with the hook. I thought I heard him say, I thought, nah, I thought I heard him say, uh, Ciroc in, in his verse when he says MGP or some walk, but he was whispering it to himself. So I thought he said Ciroc. So I was like, you still said Ciroc, my nigga, I do lean. And then that's how I came up with the hook. 
I had just got the Beamer, you feel me, off, off, off dope money. So I was like, yeah, just bought the Beamer. Could that shit look clean and how I get this shit, nigga, serving the fiends. So I was just, it was just basically everything I was doing. Uh, I think it was a hit because I feel like all my shit is hits, you feel me? So to me, and we not in the music industry or anything. We just niggas recording in a room. So I'm like, this shit hard. It's not harder than anything else I've done. It's just hard. Uh, people was fucking with it, but not more than usual, you feel me? People fuck with all my shit. That's why I ain't think nothing of it. And that good just gradually started going crazy. I remember I got a million. And it was like, damn, she got a million, <laughs> a million plays. That's crazy. Oh, Jeezy was at a crossroad. He was making money trapping and had a small buzz from his music. But it was hard for him to trade the streets for the music game. Nah, I wasn't taking no music serious. I was just doing music for fun and just making money, you feel me? Like, I didn't feel like I needed music because I'm making money, you feel me? I'm making, like, thousands in a day. What the fuck I need music for? You feel me? I'm just living life. I got my own spot. I got a brand new whip. Like, what else I got to do, you feel me? So I'm just doing music for fun. Really wasn't even trying to be rapping. And then I made the Musty song, and that shit just changed everything. But it ain't changed everything, like, overnight, you feel me? Like, throughout the year, you feel me? Everyone's starting to recognize me. Shit just changing, but it don't feel different because I always felt like I was popping. So nothing's really changing in my head. This uh, The video's getting, like, millions and millions of views. I'm like, oh, shit, shit is changing, you feel me? And that's what kind of put the shit in your head, like, oh, you could do this, you feel me? If, a th- if, if you get a thousand plays, obviously I get a thousand more than a thousand more. TK and Picasso saw the vision. They were managing Ron Ron and arranged for the group to meet and record what would eventually become Shoreline Do That Shit. TK, just, I guess he's seen the video, the musty video, and seen it was going crazy. And since he's managing Ron Ron, he hit me up like, yo, yeah, and Ron Ron needed to get in the studio. And I had been, uh, I had talked to Ron Ron like, oh yeah, we was going to do some shit. How everybody do, you feel me? And nobody really fuck with each other. I was like, yeah, we're going to do some shit. And I wanted to, but we just never did. TK FaceTime me. At this point, I'm making, like, thousands every day. What the fuck I need look like trying to, like, really rap, you feel me? So I was like, yeah, whatever. Ignore TK. TK called me again. He's like, nah, yeah, we really got to link up. I linked up with TK and got in the studio with Run Run. And I was like, whatever, bro. Like, I, don't, I ain't care about none of that shit. Like, I, don't, I ain't see... Me ever being on the radio, like, I feel like I ain't made content like that, you feel me? I feel like I just did this shit for myself, for for whoever want to fuck with it. And then niggas linked up. He's like, he's like I'm going to link you up with Ron Ron because he was managing Ron Ron. So me and Ron Ron got in the studio, did a whole tape, and that shit is history. Shit's magic. But to me, like, nothing's changing in my head, like, I feel like I've always been pop, man. I've always been that nigga, so, like, ain't shit changing. Like, the music, the numbers just going up. And then uh, we in the studio. I go to the studio every Sunday, do the same shit, turn my phone off. Before I, first, I, I, I'd actually hustle all day on Sundays. Then, like, at night, it's time to go to the studio. I don't record in the daytime, so I record at night. I get there, like, at 10 p.m., turn my phone off, and then just go to work, like, Everything around my head, like, the nigga had stashed all his files was hard. So any beat he played, we'd just do something to that beat. I wouldn't skip him nothing. Just next, 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 do some shit. So we'd do, like, three songs a night. So for four Sundays, did, like, the whole the whole shit in, like, four or five sessions. I don't want to go during the week. Prime runs as far as fuck. Don't want to go during the week. Friday, Saturdays, the niggas was too busy. And then Sunday was, like, that's the... that's. There was no, like, special thing, but that's, like, the least day niggas is doing coke, you feel me? So, <laughs> so my shit's slow on Sundays. Things started becoming serious for OGZ. He's becoming a star in his own city. This hobby is slowly turning into a job. And with the success of Musty, Atlantic Records comes calling. Yeah, no, I get recognized everywhere now, like, on the especially on the West Coast. I can't do no normal shit. But then I had already got to a point where I wasn't doing normal shit, so... Now that I'm famous and I don't, I don't hustle, it's like, damn, I want to do some normal shit, <laughs> and I can't. Like, what, what would you say you want to do? That's go like? skate, go do, hang out on the street. After that project, then I was like, yeah, we need to take rap serious. We had to do press in New York, all types of shit, like rap shit, you feel me? So 
it just becomes more serious, more like a job. And then, and then being that this was like our first year of sign, you just get to see everything. You feel me? So every this this whole year was just like a a learning experience. You feel me? And now I just really want to go hard with this shit. You feel me? People really look at you like a public figure. Like no matter how crazy the shit you talk about is, they look at you like like you should be. Um, you got to carry yourself different. You feel me? Like no matter how crazy all the shit you rap about they look at you like you use some type of you 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 people's idol you feel me so you just got to move differently this is this was supposed to happen so it's it's like n- nothing surprises me that's how i feel like it's not like oh shit labels is coming it's like yeah duh that was gonna come so now we just go in the label meetings doing all that shit and i just i just Decided that we all came to a group decision that it should be Atlantic that we signed with. I signed the deal and I'm like, all right, this one, where I stopped hustling, you feel me? Same day I signed the deal. I think the day after, two days after, they raided my crib. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> it was like all meant to be. That's obviously all God, you feel me? That's God looking out once again. Another major milestone in Ojizi's life is becoming a father. His father was deported when Ojizi was young, and they never had much of a relationship. But now, with the birth of his own son, things will be different. My son better be born any day now. So that's the next move in my life. It should just make me think differently, think bigger, just look at everything differently. My girl had just missed her period, and she's like, yo, I think I missed my period. I thought she was playing. Then she sends me, I remember her sending me the picture of the shit. I thought it was her homegirls or something. And then it ended up being hers, and she's like, yeah, you gotta have a baby. So everything just been different, you feel me? Like, like just being out on the road and shit, just, that's just what I think about, you feel me? Like, I wanna, I wanna, uh, I wanna be like the best person I could be, you feel me? We really wanted a girl. Like, I wanted a girl. She wanted a girl. Like, that's what she wanted. So when we found out she was having a boy, she was crying, all types of shit. She didn't want a boy. And then and then I was just like, nah, it's good. Like, we don't have a little boy. So she she it, it, she got it in her head. It's better we having a little boy. And for you? Yeah, I'm happy we having a boy. I get to dress him up like me, all types of shit. I got nothing but love to give, especially since it's my seed. So I don't really need like a blueprint. Like I'm just going to go with it, you feel me? Ojizi has a lot on his plate. His group is on the cusp of greatness. He just became a father. And in a way, the four members of Shoreline have LA on their back. They put the spotlight on the city. I kind of feel like, I don't want to say credit, but I kind of feel like I show niggas that it's cool to fuck with each other, you feel me? You don't gotta not like a nigga for no reason. Like, it's cool to, to really fuck with people. Like, like, cause before, at the end of the day, we all just regular people, you feel me? And I feel like that shit is cool as fuck that the whole city just does look the way it does, you feel me? Me being the person I am, I wouldn't take credit for nothing, you feel me? Cause I, I, I'm influenced by everyone, you feel me? So, listening to Draco, shit like that, like, I feel like that's a start that they just ain't get to see. It just, L.A. just didn't have an eye on it the way it does now, you feel me? I'm listening to Draco, and that's what's making me want to use Round Round Beats. Then, obviously, that's that's where the whole shit was starting, you feel me? Like, I remember listening to Draco and Rucci on that song together. And I'm like, damn, they hard as fuck. And now, uh, look, Draco popping, Rucci popping. I don't know. Like, I feel like the energy that we all put in together being in the same rooms together that's what started it you feel me like from our project when we were recording there ralphie draco's brothers there you feel me greedo was there like it's all it's all the energy that that we put together and, and it created this you feel me the west coast sound became really west coast you feel me and, and other places started popping but now the west coast it don't sound like regular west coast shit, you feel me it sound completely new the only people that was popping before us was like, what, YG, Muster? They fuck with us. Like, I'm a product of everything I've ever grew up listening to. So shit from the South, shit from the East Coast, 
like in the Midwest, like I just put it all together. They're, everyone their own person, you feel me? So I don't recommend no one do drugs. And I definitely don't do drugs to make my music, so that shit don't got nothing to do with my creativity, none of that. Like I'm a creative person. That's why I make my music sober, I do everything. But everyone's their own person, you feel me? I see homies get high as fuck and make some crazy shit. I'd rather sell drugs. Fuck doing them. I wanna be like considered one of the greats, you feel me? Just the way I look at artists that, that I was a kid looking at, like, how they are now, how they're respected and shit, that's what I want to be. So I always felt like my music was great, so that's how I'm going to keep on feeling. Like, you don't need no, um, you don't need, what's that shit called, approval or, like, from anyone, you feel me? Just do whatever you feel. This episode of The Making of Shoreline Mafia is hosted and produced by me, Jonathan Mena. Executive produced by T.K. Kimbrough. Music by Sayer. Thank you to Road Microphones for the equipment. We appreciate the support. If you like what you hear, please subscribe and rate. And let us know in the comments section what you thought about the episode. This has been a Made by Mena and R. Baron production. Max B, free Max B, man. G's up, hoes down. <laughs> he hard. We be wearing all the uh, the BB Simon belts. We be wearing that shit because of him. <laughs>